Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly to have here a Mercedes C-Class C200. So if we lift up the bonnet, it's a 1.6 Renault engine, I believe. Okay, so inside the car we have engine management light on, and it's believed to have a DPF fault, and he's had someone try to fix it, but they failed to do that. So he's brought it down here for me to have a look at. So from what I believe this car has had a couple of sensors and it's had EGR valve, DPF was apparently tried to be cleaned out but uh, let's have a look, I'm going to try and set up this diagnostic and do we'll uh, go through it. So I'm using the Eurotab 3 from Launch UK. Okay, then we'll do the enhanced version with all the special functions. We just need to try and have a look at some live data and see if we can figure out what's going on. Of course, some um, read some of the codes as well, give us an idea of what's going on. Okay, so that's loaded up now. We should be able to get in. It's a little bit slow on these Mercedes. Slower than your average car. Okay, so we're loaded up. We have an air conditioning fault, which I'm not concerned about for this car. Uh, exhaust back pressure sensor has a malfunction. There is no signal change, which probably means the yeah the uh, upstream pressure sensor is blocked. Flow rate of the exhaust gas recirculation low pressure is too low, so maybe the low pressure EGR or low pressure EGR cooler is blocked. Apparently that was already changed though. Um, plausibility error due to defective exhaust gas pressure lines between the diesel particulate filter and the pressure sensor. Uh, we've got other stuff here. That blue system has malfunction. Out plus electrical fault or open circuit. We don't seem to have any any sort of add blue errors showing up on here because normally you'd get different sort of lights come up for the add blue. But uh, right, so we're just going to try and ignore some of the stuff and we'll just concentrate on these for now. Uh, let's go in here. And okay, then we'll go to data stream, uh, exhaust, diesel particulate filter. Right, so that's the DPF pressure sensor there. We can see we've got zero reading on it. Let's rev the engine up. Okay, so we've still got no reading there. Okay, no reading on the DPF pressure sensor could mean a couple of things from sitting inside the car. That could mean the DPF pressure sensor is not working. Uh, it's unplugged. Um, the pressure lines that go to it, the rubber ones they could be burst, it's a Renault engine so that's common or the metal section of the pipe that comes to them could be blocked so that's why it's not getting a reading so it's not getting a reading so obviously you've got a few different scenarios of why it's not getting a reading sensor's not working, pipes are burst or the pipes are blocked uh, let's have a look at what else we have uh, let's have a look at the exhaust after treatment that would be the ABLU system while we're here not operational, specified value operational Hmm. Well, we don't seem to have a lot of information there, so maybe it looks like it's been had an blue delete. I'm not sure. Uh, temperatures, exhaust system, engine run idle, fuel system general. I'm trying to think where would the boost pressure system. That's where it would be. The exhaust back up back pressure or upstream pressure sensor. Just trying to see if we can find it. Oh, there we are. Exhaust pressure sensor. I think that's it. Let's give that a rev. Yeah, that's moving. Boost pressure sensor. Well, that looks okay. Exhaust gas recirculation. So that one is given a fault, but it looks like it's in the right sort of area where it should be. So I'm not sure why it's given a fault. So if we look at this sensor over here, you can see someone's not fitted it back correctly. 
Do you think it's a little noisier than it should be, the engine anyway? No. Right. So all of this is a bit loose. Everything is it's not really fitted back right. Just notice that it's not even connected to the airflow meter. So yeah, nothing's been fitted back correctly really. You can see down there it's had a new EGR. Okay, so I've just taken the bolt out from here. Um, it's all a bit of a mess this really, like it weighs even the way it's really designed, all the wires sort of wrap around each other. Now, what I'm suspecting here is this sensor is not working, or these pipes are blocked. Because uh, I can see the rubber hoses aren't burst. So, we'll get these off and uh, have a look at what's going on. Okay, so we've got a pressure gauge on the hoses there, and we can see they're not blocked. So, looks like we have a dodgy sensor. I'm not sure if it's just because it wasn't mounted right, maybe it was just banging around. Could have killed it early but it was replaced it was replaced around a year ago he says gears take a long time to change so i yeah. have to use a lot of the time we have to use the manual you know so for the past year even though this was changed you never had the problem the, the loss of power was never fixed no okay so i think i've got one similar here yeah in the van let's try this one a new sensor on or replacement sensor anyway okay that's not working either so that's a bit strange all right so now we've got a pressure gauge attached to this sensor and you can see there that the sensor is working because when we increase the pressure it's going up so now we've swapped the sensors back over testing the the original sensor. Put some pressure. A minute, just make sure it's all connected. It doesn't seem to be working as well. This one. So, manometer on here, eight millibars, and three. Things fitted on here. Okay, so if, not sure if you noticed, but it looks like to me that it, that was fitted on the wrong way around, which is what was causing the confusion on there. It was fitted, so instead of being fitted like that, it was fitted in that direction. So we're going to hold the engine up to about 3000 RPM. Okay, so the pressure coming from that pipe is too high for this to read, but according to that it's only reading sort of 15, which is a bit suspicious. Uh, I'm going to swap over the sensors again, we'll try this one. So that's exactly the same. So why have we got a really high pressure on the DPF, but the differential pressure isn't much, isn't much difference. So. What that's saying to me is we don't have a blockage at the DPF, we have a blockage further down, after the DPF. Um, so one way to confirm that is to make this, I can turn this into, we'll turn that into a, a pressure sensor, not a differential pressure sensor. So that's reading the pressure from the DPF and the pressure after it and comparing the difference. So if we disconnect this, now that's just going to read the actual pressure from the DPF, which is 44. Now if you hold the revs up again for me. Try and get that so we can see. Around 420. So just testing the exhaust tip. We have soot there. 
So what I think has happened is the soot's come past the DPF and it's also now blocked up the SCR or the it's, it's blocked up past the DPF basically so um, whether or not a clean would help this out I'm not sure. Okay so we're going to attempt to clean down the DPF and we'll also try and clean after the DPF here with some fluid and see if that works but I think sometime in the future maybe it might need the SCR replacing as well as the DPF. Um, but we'll we'll see if we can get it cleaned down and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to use some of this fluid from Launch UK and it goes into the gun here and we'll get that mixed up with a little bit of water. Pour that in here. About half of the bottle. And we just top that up with a little bit of water. Okay, so we've got that connected to that sensor hose. Connected to a compressor at 130 PSI. I'm going to spray some of this fluid in there. We'll connect up the manometer as well actually, just to keep an eye on the pressure after the, the DPF. You can see that when you spray some fluid in it, it increases a little bit. Now I've swapped around so we're putting the fluid in after the DPF. You can see the pressure after the DPF is exactly the same as the pressure before so the blockage is, is completely after the DPF. Okay now we're gonna hold the rev for a couple of minutes and see if we can get that pressure down. I mean from what I can see so far it looks like it's uh, probably a, a damaged SCR, it's, the catalyst probably collapsed. Um, not something I've really ever come across before this one. Okay, so I'm going to come into the car for a minute. We're going to do some resets of everything and then we're going to take the car for a test drive, see if we can get it to do its own regen and we'll, well it might not do that, but we're going to take it for a test drive, see if we can get all of this pressure pushed out and then we'll retest it afterwards. So we're just doing a reset on that now. So what's just popped into my head now, is I'm not sure on the full design of this engine, but if this is a well, it is a Euro six, and if it's got a low pressure EGR, the low pressure EGR cooler could be blocked, which is what's given the pressure after the DPF. Hmm. Um. I think either way, to fully determine all of that, it's going to need fully stripping down all of this car, and it's not something I'd be able to do here on the side of the road. So it might have to go to a friend of mine's garage for that, if need be. But we're going to take it for a drive now. We've put the cleaning fluid in. We'll test the pressure after the test drive. Once we've reset everything here, reset the fault codes, readapted everything, test drive done, then we'll test the pressure. Okay, so the good news is, taking it on a test drive and the car drives absolutely wonderful. Um, all of the gears are shifting properly, so his main complaint is it won't shift gears. Um, basically, he's really struggling to get it past 40, 50 miles an hour. It's shooting up to 70 miles an hour now. Within a few seconds, the gears are changing smooth driven it for about 15 minutes and the fault codes haven't returned so let's go back into the um, live data for the DPF so that has now risen up to 11 10 grams of soot may need to drive it a bit further maybe just to get a um, get it to see if it can do its own regen. Uh, I think it would need to go above sort of 15 grams until it would do a regen. Let's hold the revs up. 3000. So I can see there the grams of soot are, are rising up quickly. So we'll see 
we'll see what happens once that reaches where uh, sort of 15 grams will it try and activate a regen okay so that's sort of even out there 13.02 it doesn't really it's not really moving any further it looks like it's going back down now but we're not we're not doing a regen because it's it's at 200 degrees so we'll just take it on another quick drive okay so we've just been on another sort of 10 minutes test drive okay so here's the live data after the test drive it's sort of fluctuating between 16 coming back down to 13 to 16 um it's not tried to activate a regen and you can see there that the inhibit of the region is not active so there's nothing inhibiting or stopping the D dpf from doing a region uh, i think we're just sort of on the border of where it needs to do one but we're not really reaching that area so hmm uh, if we read the fault codes we can see that there's well there wasn't any fault codes out there that was there that's going to inhibit the, the dpf from region so it's a bit of a strange one this car i'll be honest scratching my head i don't know if it's if it's normal for it to have sort of 40 millibars of pressure after the dpf i wouldn't say that's normal most cars have about two to sort of six millibars of pressure after the dpf the dpf itself is getting sort of a normal reading now um but obviously after the dpf we have got a bit of back pressure it's not really major pressure to be concerned about but i'm not sure why it's there i don't know if it's to do with the low pressure egr system is there damage on the scr catalyst um, or the back box collapsed a bit um, but yeah the last person who fitted these sensors obviously fitted it the wrong way around um, so I think the rest of the stuff I'm not going to look at the back pressure sensor for the exhaust or upstream pressure sensor because that is reading correctly from what I can see on the live data also what I will say is if the light does come back on I'm going to recommend he takes this to a friend of mine um, WV Auto Tech in Luton and he can strip down everything off the car he's got a ramp there that, that can do all of that if need be and if we find anything i will add it in the comments of the video uh, but if the car doesn't give an issue i think the customer is happy to just use it as it is now with the sensor fitted the wrong way around uh the right way around sorry um the car seems to be driving fine and it doesn't seem to be affecting it i've driven it for 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes now and it all seems to be okay so on the various other trips he said to the other mechanics that he's been to a few different times he said each time it went there the car would last 10 minutes a maximum of 10 minutes and then the lights would come back on it wouldn't change gear properly of course it's automatic so once it goes in limp mode the gears sort of get affected as well we've still got 48 pressure after the dpf that's it i'm all finished on that one and i'll see you in the next video